at these two. The irony that around the league, fans never really fell in love with Ty Cobb, and well, maybe a little lately, but over the years, they've never been big fans of Pete's. One of the things that disappointed me the most when I first came to Cincinnati and played with Pete Rose was when we'd go around the league in places like Los Angeles, San Francisco, they would boo Pete. I'm saying to myself, how can you boo a guy who plays as hard as he does, puts as much as he does into the game, how can you as a fan boo him? But they were really booing him because he did so much to help beat their home team, and I think that's the way that Pete accepted it. But I think their similarities are differ in that Pete was really a nice guy. Ty Cobb has a bad image. I mean, the players on his own team did not like him, supposedly. I'm only going by hearsay. But the guys on Pete Rose teams love him. I played with him, and I was one of those guys. Well, I'm glad you clarified that you didn't <laughs> play with Ty Cobb. You made that clear. <laughs> Ty Cobb, of course, the Georgia Peach, passed away in 1961. And one of the ironies of tonight, September the 11th, 1985, Joe Morgan, is the fact that it was 57 years ago today, September the 11th, 1928, the Ty Cobb played his final major league game. Kind of a little interesting <laughs> twist. Well, I think it's interesting because he hit 323 and he thought he was finished. Yeah. He said, I can't play anymore. And he hit 323. A lot of people obviously would be very happy to hit 323 any time in their career. And he felt like he was going downhill, so he had to retire. Well, a fella who really isn't close to retiring at all and has been a super teammate of Pete Rose's over the years and a wonderful batsman this year for the Reds, Tony Perez is with Steve Fizia. He has indeed had a marvelous year, Tony Perez, but this is a big night for Pete Rose, 4,192. That's the hit he's looking for, but it's a special day for a friend of yours, too. Yeah, it's my son Eduardo. He's 16 today, Steve, and uh, I want to wish him a happy birthday, and uh, Pete Rose want to break the record on his birthday, and... Uh, uh, I just wish him a uh, happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños, Eduardo. So he's back on San Juan watching it. Yeah, he's watching it San Juan, and uh, they've been watching the games uh, the last three days over there, and, uh, and they wish they can see that, that type hit breaker today. The whole Perez family is such a Pete Rose friends and fans. Why? Well, because uh, we meet, we play here so long uh, together with uh, with Pete and my son, and Petey. Uh, they go out together. They play baseball when they were a kid. You know, we play t-ball in here when they were a kid. And uh, uh, really, we are very close. And that's why uh, we feel for Pete and his family as much as we do. But no, he do for my family, too. Was it just a dress rehearsal then last night? Yeah, I guess uh, he was a little anxious at that one. Uh, but I, I, guess, I think that he was saving the heat for the Eduardo's birthday. Is that right? You think so? Well, my wife, we took a predict that and down has been training. He told Eduardo and Pete that he's going to get the, the, the hit on Eduardo's birthday. And so far, we I got a good chance. Seems like good luck and fortune has followed Tony Perez around a, a long time, and, and this would be another special occasion. Yeah, it's another special occasion in my career, and, uh, and I, I think we're going to enjoy the game today, and we're going to see Pete very direct. What does it mean to you? You have been a friend of Pete Rose's for a long time. You go way back to the minor leagues. Was it special there last night with the flashes all around Riverfront Stadium? And I'm sure a little goosebumps had to be on Tony Perez's back as well. Yeah, he's a special. I think uh, last night I was ready, you know, to go out there and check his hand or give it a big hook or whatever. But uh, you know, I have to wait another day. But well, I'm glad he didn't do it last night. And he's going to do it tonight on Eduardo's special day. Everybody's predicted. Uh, you brought predicted number two last night. PD Jr. Pick, predicted number three. Any prediction from Tony Perez? Well, I think it's going to be today on the uh, second time of bet. Super. Tony, thanks very much. Thank you. Tony Perez, the first baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. Let's now go back up to Ken Wilson and Joe Morgan. There will be a base occupied very soon, most likely tonight, by Pete Rose. First, second, third. Even with the wind blowing to right, he may circle them all, though that hasn't happened very often. When Pete gets to, let's say, first base with a single, and I think he'd like to have a single for the big hit, what's going to go through his mind? You've known him for so long. Well, I would think he would be remembering all the people that helped him get to the position that he's in. First of all, family, father, things like that. And then the people who have helped him along the way. I know uh, I sit next to the guy for so many years in the locker room. And right now I know what's going through his mind. He's playing over and over in his mind right now how Eric Shaw will pitch him. How he pitched him last time. If he was successful, he knows that he'll change. If he was not successful, he figures he'll do something different again. But I feel like he's thinking right now he's going to throw a sinker away, slider in, and the fork ball. 
So I think these are the things that are going through his mind now, and he's trying to decide which pitch he's going to hit for the base hit. When Pete gets to the base and the moment has occurred, he says he wants it to be very short, no ceremony. He wants the game to continue. Do you think with this big throng, standing room only, that he's going to be able to allow that? Well, I think it'll happen because that's what Pete wants, and he'll continue to do or run the bases like he feels like it's over. He'll get the hit, he'll stand there, he'll accept all the applause, he'll wave his hat, he'll do all the things he's supposed to do, and then he'll try to get the game started. And I think that is because he wants the momentum of the game to keep going, because he wants his team to try to continue to play well. The Reds, of course, battling to finish second and really hoping that the Dodgers have a big slump and that the Reds might yet win the National League Western Division. Well, a fellow who led a lot of Dodger teams to division and National League titles and certainly was instrumental in the Padres' victory in the National League last year is standing by with Steve Fiziak. That, of course, is Steve Garvey. Well, Ken Wilson, we were talking with Pete Rose before the ball game at 4 o'clock this afternoon, and I asked him who are some of the active players that he really, really cares about in this game of baseball. And he mentioned one name right off the bat, Steve Garvey of the San Diego Padres. He mentioned the tough days between the two of you when you were at the Dodgers, and it was a great series, and I know you admire Pete Rose the same. It always has been and always will be a great challenge for Pete and I to play to each other. It's a mutual admiration, both as players and as individuals. I'm really happy for what he's about to achieve and to have that, the opportunity to play against him all these years. It's been an honor for me. Well, you saw another great occasion. You saw Hank Aaron right. break Babe Ruth's record. What was it like at that time? Well, that was a monumental achievement also, a longevity uh, mark concerning home runs. Pete's the same way concerning hits. Uh, two quality gentlemen who have really helped set the competitive standards for the game, and I applaud both of them, and just fortunate to be able to be part of both. Steve, it's like a World Series atmosphere. The flashes last night throughout Riverfront Stadium when he steps to the plate. You're on the other side. Do chills go up and down your spine? Oh, yeah. I've never seen so many flash bulbs go off and flashes. It was really a light show here, and as the game wore on, there are less pictures, but the same excitement. It'll be that way tonight. Uh, we hope Pete gets a hit, gets stranded, and we win the game. So, <laughs> again, we, uh, we hope for the best for him. Now, would you like to see it happen while you're here? Oh, definitely so. Again, uh, it would be the ultimate double to have seen Hank Aaron's and to see Pete Rose's accomplishments. Uh, about the Pete Rose situation, he comes out and the media is just mobbing him. Have you had a chance to talk to him? Yeah, at first base last night. I told him to keep breathing. That's the key in these situations. You know, a lot of times... Everybody's expecting you to do well. You want to do well. There's a lot of, a lot of anxiety. Uh, but Pete communicates as well as anybody. He really, both on and off the field, typifies what the game is all about. How do you handle a pressure situation like that? He said, I was not nervous. I was over anxious. How do you? You've been in that situation before. You have to stay within yourself. And Pete has done that so many, many times. But when you have 50,000 people and millions of others pulling for you, you want to do it because you more or less want to get it done, let people go back to their normal lives, but enjoy it, the memory. And last night he was a little anxious. I'm quite sure he'll be within himself tonight. And in that way, it's unlike the World Series. In the World Series, the focus is on the team. Last night and tonight, it's on one man. Well, it is, and rightly so. The, this is a rare instance where the, uh, the game comes secondary. But it should be in a lot of ways. But I think, again, the perspective is it's a team sport. His contributions to his team's success have been as monumental as anyone, so he deserves all the attention. Steve, for the last two weeks, just the media, the national media has been following him around, and you've been in that atmosphere before. How do you say, how do you not say no, I guess, to the press? Because they're on you every single minute of the day. Well, Pete couldn't, and neither could I, because he realizes the benefit of what he's doing now to counteract some of the negative press now with the trial in Pittsburgh, some of the thoughts about other problems throughout this year, the strike and drugs. And so what he's doing is uh, perfectly balancing out the other problems with what I think is the ultimate positive uh, event, and that's setting the hit record. And without, without a doubt, Steve Garvey is excited for Mr. Rose. Definitely. Thank you, Steve. Thanks a lot. Steve Garvey, the first baseman for the San Diego Padres, and he too, along with 51,000-plus here at Riverfront, hoping to see that historic hit tonight at Riverfront Stadium. Let's go back to Ken Wilson and Joe Morgan. Pete Rose is ready. The ball game start being delayed a few minutes because of the heavy traffic outside and the fact that Pete Rose scheduled to hit second, of course, in the first inning. They would not want anyone to be stuck outside in a long line waiting to get in and, and miss the big hit, which, of course, could come in inning one against Eric Schell. Steve Garvey had some very interesting points, Joe, and I know you've talked to players in both leagues, and, and you have some feeling for how the other players around baseball feel about Pete. You know, it's kind of strange when Pete first came into the major leagues 
and he ran the first base on a walk. People called him a hot dog. The other players called him a hot dog. They said, you know, there's not enough mustard in the world to cover that hot dog. Things like that. But as Pete showed that this was just the way he played the game and it wasn't a put on, it was not an act, over the years now, those guys that see him run the first base all want to emulate him. So now I think that has gone from somebody that just didn't understand him to people that really respect and love him. And a lot of players around the league say things like, if I had one ambition, I'd like to grow up and play the ball game like Pete Rose does. And I think that's the important thing now. And how true it is, how many major leaguers we talk about on teams in, in both leagues now. And there's always a note about them. They idolize Pete right. Rose, especially the switch hitters, yeah. especially the second base. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of people forget that Pete came up as a second baseman. Sure. And he was kind of my idol. At first year, I was in Houston, and Pete had been rookie of the year, and I'm following, trying to follow in his footsteps, so to speak. And he was rookie of the year, and I just wanted to pattern myself after him as a second baseman. I never ran the first base on walks. I figured if they give me a walk, I'm going to take it. But that is the way that Pete Rose has always played the game. He's always hustled. He's always given 110% if you can use that phrase, and I think that that's the important thing. Like I say, the statistics to me don't really mean anything. It's just the way that he plays the game and the emphasis he puts on winning and the dedication that he brings to the ballpark every day. One of the things I find interesting about Pete Rose, of course, you hear so much about his dad who passed away, Pete Sr., in 1970 and the large influence he was. But when you ask Pete about his idol on the field, he says the player he most idolized as a youngster was Johnny Temple. And, of course, he was the red second baseman at Crosley Field when Pete was growing up. Right. I think that's very interesting that Johnny Temple was his idol. Johnny Temple was a hard-nosed player, too. He was not in the mold of a Pete Rose, but he played the game similarly. I mean, he did whatever it took to win. He bunted, hit the ball behind the runner. He did a lot of things that Pete does, only he was not as quite talented as much as Pete, but he played the game similar to Pete Rose. Now the crowd has arrived. The lineups have been exchanged at home plate. The Reds players, including Pete Rose, have taken the field. And in Cincinnati, we are set for the national anthem. Can you see? So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night are the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. the Reds battling it out for second place in the West hoping against hope to catch the division leading Dodgers and Pete Rose tied with Tyrus Raymond Cobb on the all time hit list in the top spot defensively for the Reds Nick is Sasky in left Eddie Milner in center Dave Parker is in right field the third baseman is Buddy Bell Dave Concepcion anchors at short Ron Oster is the second baseman Pete Rose is at first base the catcher tonight is Bo Diaz and Tom Browning a rookie left hander is on the mound. Browning will face Padre shortstop Gary Templeton. Jerry Royster hits second. He is the second baseman. Then right fielder Tony Gwynn. Steve Garvey hitting cleanup for San Diego at first base. In left field, batting fifth, Carmelo Martinez. Then Kevin McReynolds, San Diego's center fielder. Bruce Bochy does the catching again tonight. He hits seventh. At third base, Kurt Bavacqua and Eric Shaw, the right-handed starter, batting ninth for San Diego. On the mound tonight for the Reds is Tom Browning. He's the winningest rookie pitcher in the major leagues. He's 15 and 9 with a 3.43 earned run average. 
He's also one and one against the Padres this year. Don Browning came up last September, made his major league debut, a very successful one at Dodger Stadium. He has been on almost the miraculous end of the spectrum here in 1985. Tom Browning, a youngster with a lot of boys on a big night here in Cincinnati. The crowd last night, standing room only over 51,000, and a similar crowd here to watch this game tonight. The weather is a lot cooler. A brisk breeze. It was just in the 70s today in Cincinnati after being in the high 80s and low 90s the last few days. So it is on the cool and breezy side of brisk breeze blowing from the left field corner out towards the right field corner. I think Tom Browning will handle the pressure of this ball game very well. And the first pitch to Templeton is a strike. Templeton at 277, six homers, 48 RBIs, a switch hitter. And he follows it back 0 and 2. And a contrast from Ron Robinson last night, who kept everything away from the hitters. I think you'll see Tom Browning moving the ball in and out. He'll pit predominantly away, but he'll move the ball in and out. Still 0 and 2. on deck just underway. Templeton with that very easy swing. Doesn't look like he puts much effort into his swing. He's had an outstanding season. He's out of there. Browning strikes out the first hitter of the night. If that's any indication of whether he's going to be nervous or not tonight he answered that very quickly because he got ahead 0-2 and, and threw four strikes. You could see the indication to Jerry Royster coming to the plate from Gary Templeton up. Watch out for the fastball up. Last night Tim Flannery played second base. Jerry Royster getting the nod tonight and hitting 275. Three homers, 22 RBI. One strike. Tom Browning seems to be throwing a little harder than the last outing. He may be hyped up a little more than Pete. He just misses. One and one. The plate umpire tonight is Lee Wire. At first base at Montague, Fred Brocklander at second, Dutch runner at third. One ball, two strikes. and Royster both having trouble getting around on the fastball. The off-speed pitch, and Bell is going to have to hurry. He gets it. Two down. Buddy gets the ball and gets rid of it quickly because Jerry Royster is very fast on the right hand side of the plate. Tony Gwynn, 307 is his average. He's among the top hitters in the league. Ball one. He is tied for sixth in the National League with the Reds, Ron Oster. First, Willie McGee of the Cardinals leads the league. Then Pedro Guerrero, Tommy Herr, Tim Raines, and Ryan Sandberg. Two and one. I think the amazing thing.
thing to me about Tony Gwynn is for him to be able to hit 350 last year on the regular turf. Ron Oster to Pete Rose, and the Padres are gone. It'll be Milner, Rose, and Parker, bottom of the first inning. Padres, nothing, Reds coming up. San Diego, the outfield, Carmelo Martinez, Kevin McReynolds, and Tony Gwynn. The infield from third to first, Kurt Pavacqua, Gary Templeton, Jerry Royster, and Steve Garvey. Bruce Bochy, the catcher again tonight, Terry Kennedy on the shelf with a bad back, and Eric Shaw on the mound. The Padre right-hander will face Eddie Milner, Pete Rose, Dave Parker, Nicky Sasky, Buddy Bell, Dave Concepcion, Gold Diaz, Ron Oster, and Tom Browning. Starting for the Padres tonight, Eric Shaw has a record of 9-9. Nine and nine. Earn run average of 3.24. He's 1 and 0 against the Reds this season. He defeated the Reds in San Diego earlier in the year. Eddie Milner will try to get something going for the Reds here in the first. He has had an extraordinary second half. And those are the numbers on the season. Chow is ready, and the first pitch hit down the line, and it'll go in the crowd. Foul ball, one strike. We'll be able to find out very quickly which pitch Eric Chow thinks is his best pitch tonight. We'll be able to tell by the way he, which one he throws the most in the beginning of the ball game. When he starts warming up in the bullpen, he finds out right away which pitch he's going to go with early. One ball, one strike. On deck. First inning, Pete Rose. There's a victim awaiting, and it could be the 29-year-old right-hander Eric Shaw from Riverside, California. Two balls, one strike. I think that's his palm ball. At least that's what we'll call it tonight. Breaking pitch and it's two and two. Eric Shaw is a clubhouse flake in many ways. Shaw, a physics major at the University of California, Riverside, probably one of the most intelligent players in the game today. Bavacqua charging. And there's one out. Pete Rose against Eric Shaw. Ball one. It'll be interesting to see if Eric Shaw tries to pitch Pete the way Lamar Hoyt did last night, and that would be fastballs in and change up the way. Rose looking for hit 4-1-9-2. And it's one ball, one strike. And he really had a confident rip. And that was a fastball in tight which I think is the way that they'll try to pitch him since they were successful with it last night. And that is really the only spot in Pete's batting stance that he's vulnerable in. If you have a lump in your throat, you're only human. And it's two balls, one strike on Rose. Everybody on their feet here in Cincinnati and a worldwide television audience watching these moments tonight here at Riverfront Stadium. 2-1 pitch from Shaw in the left center. There it is. Rose has a good stop. That's number 4,192.
this certainly his crowning achievement. And for baseball, a game that grows from its past and finds warmth in statistics, this is one of the all-time great moments. The only thing I'm disappointed in, Ken, is I can't be down there to shake his hand right now. Well, there is love of plenty here in Cincinnati. And Eric Shaw becomes a spectator as this city loves their native son. And I think, Joe Morgan, you would agree that from somewhere above tonight, Pete's dad has to be looking down with a big smile on Cincinnati Riverfront Stadium and his little son, Petey. It has to be a very approving smile from Pete Sr. The moment we've all waited for, hit number 4,192 that makes Pete Rose the all-time Major League Baseball hit leader. It comes at 8.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, September the 11th, 1985, off the Padres' Eric Shaw. And for all the people around that are watching and have your toast ready, let's all drink a toast to Pete Rose, the most prolific base hitter in all of baseball history. Pete, this bud's for you. All right. Pete Rose is baseball. And I think this is a great, thrilling moment for me, a guy that played with him for about nine years and enjoyed every moment of it. Pitch from Eric Shaw. And 
I guess appropriately, Pete Rose is the very first runner in this ball game that will long be forgotten. No matter if the Padres or if the Reds win, it's Pete Rose's night. He truly is number one. hit of all time. Dave Parker steps in and Eric Chow is ready to go to work. And at this moment, Pete Rose at first is just another base runner. One ball on Parker. There is no score. Bottom of the first inning. Look at Parker. Oh, shrug those shoulders. Let's get back to life again. Wow, is that something? Joe Morgan, we ought to just stop the game, play two tomorrow, and let's have the celebration and the big ceremony that's scheduled for after this one. Well, obviously there's going to be a big letdown in the crowd, and it's tough for Eric Shaw to pick back up and remember that this is a baseball game that he's involved in and try to win the ball game for the Padres. I think the Reds aren't going to have any problems trying to win the ball game, but I think it's a letdown for the pitcher that gives up that hit finally. Three and zero. Oh. Joins Tracy Stallard, who gave up Roger Maris's 61st home run, and Al Downing, the left-hander of the Dodgers, who allowed Hank Aaron's 715th home run. Eric Shaw, man of trivia games now. A walk to Parker, and there are two on with nobody up. Bruce Bo Bochy goes out to talk to Eric Shaw because he knows he's lost his composure. And uh, it's just hard to get your concentration back after something like that happens. Hard shot just about jumped out of her corsage when Pete got the hit. At first is Nikki Sasky. Rose goes to third. Parker is erased on the force out. And runners on the corners with two away. No score, bottom of the first. That was a very poorly turned double play there. Templeton couldn't get the ball out of his glove quick enough to give it to Royster. But this should be a double play. It's a ground ball right at the shortstop, but watch, he takes too long to get the ball to Jerry Royster, which lets. Dave Parker get on top of him and forces him to take a little bit off the throw. What's for dessert? What do we do now? Rose has his hit. He's at third. He's Sasky at first and Buddy Bell up at the plate. And he drives it but not deep enough. And Martinez is there. The Reds in the first inning. No runs. They lead to no San Diego errors and Pete Rose's 4,192nd hit after an inning at Riverfront. There's no score. Pete Rose has his hit. It has occurred. Number 4,192. Baseball's all-time hit leader. And Steve Garvey, headed for the Hall of Fame, also looks at a strike from Tom Browning leading off the second inning. Garvey hitting 275, 17 homers, 68 RBIs. And he's in the hole 0 and 2. One ball, two strikes. After Garvey, Carmelo Martinez, and then Kevin McReynolds. Dave Concepcion throws out Steve Garvey 101.
fielder Carmelo Martinez one strike former Cub farm hand Martinez hitting 243 17 homers 59 RBI I was talking to Deacon Jones today about Carmelo Martinez and he kind of likens him to a young a raw Tony Perez meaning that eventually he feels this guy's going to be a nice RBI man for the San Diego Padres. Not necessarily a 300 here like Tony, but he's going to be a big RBI man. His job will be to drive in runs and he'll be able to produce those runs for the ball club. Martinez behind in the count one and two. And Martinez goes down swinging. 25 year old Tom Browning has his second strikeout and I would imagine for Browning who is out after his 16th victory of the year he's relieved that it's more of a ball game now gives him a better shot at another victory and a victory for the Reds. Ball one on Kevin McReynolds. Bochi is on deck for the Padres. Defense is straight away on McReynolds. 3 0. McReynolds gets the green light, and it's 3 and 1. last thing you want to see is your big slugging center fielder swing weakly at three and oh and three and one pitches you want him to have at least have a great cut at the ball buddy bell has to back up which spells trouble and Nick Reynolds is safe at first base and again it's over and over and over when an infielder has to back up you know it's trouble you rarely are able to get the runner that's a base hit that is not a base hit, but it scored a base hit. That is not a base hit in the major leagues. It's a base hit on the tonight, scores card. Tonight in Cincinnati with the Reds playing the Padres. According and to not only that, it's the first hit of the ball game for the Padres. And your point is you'd like to see a better hit for the first one. The rule book says that the first hit should be a clean hit. The rule book says that. Didn't know that, did you? Bruce Bochy is the hitter. He's the Padre catcher. To differentiate, of course, from one that scuffed a little bit like that. Right. Exactly. Because what happens if Tom Browning doesn't give up another hit the rest of the ball game? Then the scorer does what they often do. No, he goes he... back after the game and says, ah, oh, that wasn't a hit. No, he can't do that. One and two. Pardon me? He can't do that on a no hitter. Well, he can't give him a hit on that either. Well, I guarantee you they did. wouldn't change it. <laughs> Tom Browning. No runs, one hit. San Diego leaves their first runner. Pete Rose has already gotten his hit. What a moment. There's no score. Score here in Cincinnati at Riverfront Stadium. Pete Rose in the first inning on a 2-1 pitch from Eric Shaw. Single to left center. The hit. The greatest hit of all time. Number 4,192. He has more hits than anyone in baseball history. There will be a ceremony after the game on the field, a lot of festivities, and we will have a special post-game show for you on the Cincinnati Reds Network. The greatest hit of all time, the celebration of Pete Rose becoming baseball's all-time hit leader, coming up right after tonight's telecast. There's the man who, for many years, will be asking that fateful question when baseball trivia buffs get together, which pitcher from what team gave up Pete Rose's 4,192nd hit? Well, and the one thing I think Pete is happy about is that he did not get it 
against a rookie pitcher or an unknown, one of the guys that's been added to the roster after the roster dwelled up to 40 players. I think he's happy that it was against a guy such as Eric Shaw, who has 13 victories this year and was one of the top pitchers in the National League last year. So I think he's pleased with that. Dave Concepcion has started off in the second inning for the Reds. One strike. 253, seven homers, 38 RBIs. Out of play, two strikes. Another sidelight to all of this is the umpire behind the plate. They'll always want to know about Eric Shaw, of course, and then they'll have another trivia question of who was the umpire. And Lee Wire has said for a couple of days, he says, I told Pete when he was with the Phillies that I would be the man calling balls and strikes the night he got the hit to break Ty Cobb's record. And big Lee Wire definitely was the man on the spot. Hey, there's a hit for Dave Concepcion. Oh, Davey, whose ninth inning single won the game Monday night, two to one for the Reds, leads off the second with a single. The important thing now is for the Reds to make sure that they win the ball game. Not that it's that easy, but I think all their concentration should go toward winning this ball game for Pete. This game should be dedicated for Pete because it's not going to be as much fun in the press conference afterwards or any celebration if the Reds lose the ball game. The batter is Bo Diaz. He takes a ball. Bo hitting 185 with five homers, 11 RBIs since coming over from the Phillies. A very fine defensive catcher who does have some pop in his back. Two and oh. You can tell him that you were here via television at Riverfront Stadium for the big hit. Gets a very good jump and makes the play routinely. Concepcion to first again, and there's one out now. If you're really into the numbers, you're going to want to know what happened at 8.01 p.m. in the first inning. As we mentioned, on a 2-1 pitch. A single to left center field. Having a tremendous year average wise. Ball one. Second inning at Riverfront. Just a steady buzz from this standing room only crowd. on Oster. Shaw has not been going that well lately. Well, and for that matter, nor have the Padres. Shaw in his last three starts is winless, and he has been tagged with a couple of losses. So trying to right the ship and move above 500 here tonight. He's 9-9. Nine and nine. He's actually had the same type of season this year as he had last year. He got off to a good start. And he faltered the second half, as a lot of people might remember. He didn't pitch very well in the playoffs, nor in the World Series last year. And down the stretch, he struggled an awful lot. Davey goes. Martinez goes after it. And he is there. And 
Concepcion who reached second base scampers back to first base two outs. Attendance here in Cincinnati this year has been marvelous. This crowd tonight, if it equals last night, Tom Browning stepping in, will move the club over 1.6 million in home attendance. One strike on Tom. Oh, it has been a tremendous year for baseball here in Cincinnati in many ways. strikes. These two teams play here again tomorrow night. Jay Tibbs and Andy Hawkins. It's going to be funny without any cameras around tomorrow. They'll still be here. <laughs> Bavacqua has the room and that retires the side. Reds get a hit. They leave their third runner. Two innings have gone by. There's no score. Set to go, it's the third, and Kurt Bavacqua leading off for San Diego. Kurt's hitting 247 this year, a couple of home runs and 18 RBIs. One and one. A reminder to stay with us after the game telecast for the greatest hit of all time, which will cover the celebration of Pete Rose becoming baseball's all time hit leader tonight. One and two on Kurt Bavacqua. Joe Morgan is going to be instrumental in the ceremony, talking with Pete. We look forward to that. We'll be on the field. We'll have all of the post-game coverage for you right here on the Reds TV network. Diaz and Bell are there. Can Diaz get it? No. He almost got the cameraman. Your local Cincinnati Toyota dealers, Toyota of Cincinnati, Tri County Toyota, Beachmont Toyota, and Howard Adams Toyota are proud to announce the winner of the 1985 Toyota Conversion Van Giveaway Sweepstakes. A big contest leading up to Pete's hit. Two and two. And the winner for predicting both the correct game and inning of Pete's record breaking hit is Shirley Gloria of Cincinnati. Congratulations to Shirley Gloria of Cincinnati. You'll hear from your Toyota dealers shortly. Oh, what a hit. And oh, what a feeling, Toyota. Congratulations, Shirley. She said that Pete Rose's hit would break the record in this game in the first inning. The count on Bavacqua is three and two. Browning has given up a Two out, second inning infield single to Kevin McReynolds. And he has struck out three. There's a light up there behind home plate. You can see it shining. And they must get that off before any play can continue. The media is everywhere tonight here at Riverfront Stadium. And they forget that there is a ball game going on. And by the way, they're still playing. The lock was pop up, awaited by Concepcion. That's the first out, third inning. It happened at 8.01 in the first inning. This is what it looked like after Rose's single that was 4,192. the pitch out of play one strike two strikes Shaw is a hitter 100 that is six for 60 and he has an RBI he's out of there 
four strikeouts for Browning, who is pitching very effectively. Watching the commotion at first base there with Tony Perez holding Pete, I was wondering if there was any of his teammates that had seen all of the great hits he's made, like 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 in this one. I saw the 2,000, and then I saw the 3,000, but I don't think Tony nor myself saw the 4,000, so we probably seen them all but that one. Gary Templeton struck out in the first inning. One strike to come. Milner in center field. Padres go in order. On to the bottom of the third. Padres and Reds, no score. Come up again in the third inning, but he already has the hit. It'll be Milner, Rose, and Parker against Eric Shaw. The first hit that Rose had as a big leaguer was in April 1963, right here in Cincinnati at Crosley Field, off the Pittsburgh Pirates right-hander Bob Friend. It was a triple. One strike on Milner. He fouled out in the first inning. change your palm ball one and one Joe you go way back hit number 1000 for Pete was also at Crosley Field in 1968 two and one and that came off the New York Mets Dick Selma hit 2000 did not occur here good pitch two and two Number 2000 came in 1973 in San Francisco off Ron Bryant, a left hander. Eddie out in front. And Gwen has it. That's the first out. And Pete Rose will come up. Joe Morgan, his last big hit here was number 3,000 in 1978 off Steve Rogers. His monumental historical hits since then have been elsewhere, including the one that equaled Ty Cobb the other day off Reggie Patterson in Chicago. Actually hit number 3,000 was a line drive down the left field line for his 3,000th hit and Tony Perez was the first one to greet him at first base. At that time Tony Perez was playing for the Montreal Expos. That hit on May 5th 1978 was off Steve Rogers here at Riverfront. the hit in the first inning the record breaker that's a slider low and in and Pete does what he does so often on the ball breaking down and in he kind of pushes it off him to left field and lines it over shortstop and Mar shot the majority owner of course was out hurriedly to congratulate Pete Rose Dave Parker trying to drop one in. He does. Pete heading for third. Parker will hold at first. And the Reds have runners at first and third with one on. Dave hits this ball right off the end of the bat. And it's a blooper. And on a normal turf, I think they would have been able to keep Pete from going to third. But the ball bounces high. Carmelo actually makes a fine play to keep Dave from going to second on the play. No score. A man at the plate is Nicky Sasky. He hit into a force out in the first inning. Ball one. Only one out. At 
New York tonight in the battle for first place in the East. Top of the fourth, Cardinals Mets, no score. Dodgers 1 1 in Atlanta. Royster to Templeton. They get the out. And scoring is Pete Rose to make it 1 0 Cincinnati. Nisaski safe at first. And Nick has his 49th RBI. Anybody tells you that Templeton doesn't give you the effort, he really gave a fine effort there. Well, this is a tough play on a shortstop because Dave Parker is known to break up double plays. And actually, he took it a little easy on Templeton because he knew that he couldn't complete the play. But Gary hung in there very well. Buddy Bell up there with a strike count. Texas has beaten Oakland today, 6-3 to three over in the American League. It's the only major league final. Two strikes. Rose walks with one out, goes to third on the Parker single, and scores as Isaski hits into a force out. One and two. Six RBIs in the last three games for Buddy Bell. And he strikes out here in the third inning. One run for the Reds on one hit, a runner left, and three complete. Reds one, Padres nothing. Another big Reds special date coming up here at Riverfront. Everybody in the park is going to walk away with a special souvenir. It's Team Picture Day, sponsored by York Optometrists, and it's coming up this Sunday as the Reds host the Dodgers at 2:15. Everybody in attendance receives a free color picture of the 85 Reds, including Pete Rose. So a chance to add a special item to your current Reds collection or start a new one with this year's team picture. It's this Sunday, team picture day, the Reds and the Dodgers at 215, thanks to York optometrists. Royster leads off. Diaz, after the foul ball, reaches, but he doesn't get it. One strike on Royster. Padres have gotten good production from Jerry Royster and Tim Flannery. I still think one of the reasons they have not been able to stay or stay out front in the West or repeat as winners in the West is because of the loss of Alan Wiggins. Rose and Diaz. Oh, what a catch. Look at that. Oh, wow. Well, oh, he was out of that crouch and over there in a hurry, and that made the play. One of the things that happens when a guy hits a foul ball, it starts off going away from you, and then it reverses and comes back to the catcher all the time. Watch, he runs over, and this ball actually comes back, and he still makes a great play. Boy, you talk about some tremendous camera work. What a job by our crew here at Riverfront Stadium. That was just sensational. One ball, one strike. The hitter is Tony Gwynn. After Royster fouls out. Royster, nice play. Two down. Holster being a tall short second baseman does not get into a low crouch like a lot of guys. So he's actually in better position to reach up for a high ball, but not in as good a position on a low ground ball. But he is being tall. He does not crouch nearly as much as your normal second baseman do. it away. San Diego with one hit and one base runner. McReynolds on a very questionable scoring decision in the second inning. One and one. the Padres will get the scorekeeper off the hook but it still should not be scored a base hit that early in the ball game. Well, as long as there's only one the spotlight shines on that McReynolds ground ball to third 
in the second inning. Bell backed up on it through high to first. Rose unable to tag McReynolds going by. I guess the key in the scorer's thinking would have to be would he have beaten it out if the throw was good? Which was not accurate because if Rose had a chance to swipe at him, that means the throw on target would have beaten him to the bag. And we'll see when all is said and done tonight just how important that particular play remains. Darby commits. Diaz will throw him out. A strikeout. Number five in that department for Browning. So he has a one hit shutout through four innings. And it's one nothing Reds. Riverfront Stadium tonight. Pete Rose's 4,192nd hit. Making him the all time hit leader came in the first inning. So it was only appropriate that Bench was here. Tony Perez here and of course Joe Morgan here and I had the best seat in the house. I got to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you really go down in baseball lore getting a chance to truly be a part of the festivities. Dave Concepcion in the fourth leading off ball one. Reds lead it one nothing. Chow has trouble. Davey's got a chance. He's there. And for Eric Chow, that was just a matter of physics. Davey checks swing. He tries to get out of the way, try to stop his swing. Chow can't come up with the short hop. And he chases it. I tell you what, he gave a heck of an effort on this ball. And now they score that an error. Bo Diaz, the batter. Bo fly to left in the second inning. One strike. After Diaz, it'll be Oster and then Browning. Six to four to three double play that has stopped many a rally. <laughs> that is your pitcher's favorite weapon. He hits it a hard, lines one hop to Gary Templeton, who does everything so casually, <laughs> gets it over the second and rushes for the first. That's your routine double play. Ron Oster with an eight game hitting streak takes a ball. Ron Clyde to uh, Martinez in left center in the second inning. One and one. Pete Jr. ought to just about be ready to go back to school. Too. That was what I was wondering about. Is, is he ready to go back to school? He's probably got to do some network shows yet, doesn't he? <laughs> that interesting cartoon in the USA Today had a picture of Pete Rose being interviewed, and he says, I can't stop at 492. Petey Jr. is right on my heel. <laughs> Garvey beats Oster to the bag. An error in the inning. Nobody left. We've seen four innings tonight, and Rose's big hit. Red's on top, one nothing. Sure, the game's only left. September schedule features lots of senior citizen specials and there's one coming up a week well next week a week from yesterday the 17th the Giants here at 1235 and veteran Reds fan 65 and over may purchase either box or reserve seats at half price so make your plans now for all the September senior citizen specials including Tuesday the 17th the Reds and Giants at 1235 How about Wednesday the 11th tomorrow as it said on the screen. That'll work too. Either way, there are a number, as we mentioned, senior citizen specials. 
Here's Carmelo Martinez. One strike on Carmelo, who struck out his first at bat. He's in the hole 0 and 2. So tomorrow, a senior citizen special, and also next Tuesday. So for you veteran fans, a lot of opportunity to pick up on the bargains. Well, Martinez, just like one of those revolving doors at the department store, he struck out twice. You know, talking about veteran fans, we're aware, Joe, of a fan celebrating his 100th birthday, 100 years young, Grover Cleveland Thompson. First pitch to McReynolds, a ball. Grover Cleveland Thompson resides over in Latonia, Kentucky at the Rosedale Manor. Milner will glide in under this one. And that's the second out. And as you can imagine, Grover Cleveland Thompson celebrating birthday 100 today goes back to the Cobb era. So he has seen Tyrus Raymond Cobb and Pete Rose. And when pressed tonight to make a comparison between the Georgia Peach and Charlie Hustle, Mr. Thompson did the right thing. He said, couldn't say. Bruce Bochy has himself a hit. Mr. Thompson, happy birthday. Let us hope you see many more great moments in baseball history. And I don't blame you for trying to beg off from saying if Pete's better than Ty or Ty was better than Pete. Let's just say they certainly have been two marvelous players. I think the best way to talk about it is the way Pete does. You can't compare players from different eras. First of all, they played with a different style of baseball when Ty Cobb played. They did not have relief specialists, things like that. They played only day baseball. There were a lot of things that are different. Uh, but the balls are a lot harder now. They travel faster. Just a lot of things that are different. So I don't think you can really compare. The hitter is Kurt Lavacqua. Bell on the force out. And the inning's over. No runs a hit, a runner left. Four and a half have been played. One nothing red. Coming in the first inning, he hit a 2-1 Eric Shaw pitch into left center. Well, who better to teach the art of switch hitting than Pete Rose, one of the all-time greats, the all-time hit leader. And you can learn Pete's lessons through his new cassette tape entitled Pete Rose, Baseball's Greatest Switch Hitter. It's got everything, and it's available at the Reds 580 gift shop. To order your copy, send $12.95 each, plus $2 postage and handling to the 580 gift shop, 6th and Walnut, Cincinnati, 45202. Tom Browning takes a strike. He leads off here in the fifth inning. Browning's 0 for 1. Two strikes on the Reds pitcher. Two strikes. Milner is on deck and we'll get a third look tonight at Pete Rose. Reynolds, the grab, the first 
that's out and Browning advances to third. for the rest of the season as far as I'm concerned will be the letdown that follows something as spectacular as this 4190 second base hit. I think he's going to have to really get more inspired. His team's going to have to play better and stay in the race in order to keep him hyped up. Infield pulls in. One out. Ball one. But if anyone can keep themselves at a high pitch for the remainder of the season I'd have to choose Pete Rose. Pete Got the record-breaking hit in the first inning. He walked and scored the game's only run in the third. 2-0. And he's at bat here in the fifth with Browning at third. 1-0. 3 and 0. Well, the question is, does the manager let the hitter hit 3 and 0 here. He does not let him hit 3 and 0. 3 and 1. in the fifth inning. And you know Dick Williams who's been around baseball so many years winning a lot of ball games a successful manager had to be thrilled to see Pete's hit in the first inning. I think Dick Williams is one of the real good managers in baseball today. All one on Parker. And he has some interesting quotes and when he did a couple of things unorthodoxly early in the season someone says you didn't follow the book. He says, I don't manage by the book because I didn't meet the guy that wrote the book. Nice play by Bochy, 2 and 0. Meaning because it worked years ago does not mean it's the proper thing to do with modern baseball players. So I respect him for that because you find too many managers that do manage by what is known as the book, the standard way of managing since like around 1920. Now they're going to walk Parker with two out. Pitch to See here again, this is Dick Williams not managing by the book. You would usually walk Parker if the man was on second base, but not normally with a man on third base, so you have a 
runner on first and third. Very few managers will do that. I personally think it's a good play because I think you'd rather face Nicky Sasky in this situation than Dave Parker, who's leading the leg and runs about it in. Sasky has an RBI tonight and has 49. First and third, two outs. Ball up. A reminder again for everyone on the Reds television network, our special show, the greatest hit of all time, will follow tonight's game telecast. The ceremonies and celebration on the field will be witnessed, and you'll be part of it on the greatest hit of all time. One and one. The Reds are run four hits, no errors. San Diego, no runs, two hits, and one error. Broken back, one hopper, and Templeton takes what could have been a tricky play and handles it like a good shortstop. He makes it easy, and it's one nothing Reds. Leads off, inning six, swinging and... San Diego against Tom Browning. Two strikes. One and two. Chow struck out his first at bat. Browning has struck out at least one in every inning, and he has six strikeouts in all. Two and two. It remains two balls, two strikes. Templeton. With a big game last night is on deck. He had four hits. And what proved to be the big RBI. 3-2 San Diego won last night. After the Reds won it in the ninth. On Monday night 2-1. Bell smoothly makes the play. And Rose able to hold on. One away. Gary Templeton coming up to the plate. But. Well, he's one of the better defensively also. Watch this play that ended the fifth inning. Nick gets jammed, and that's the worst ball to be hit to a shortstop. The guy that jams himself, and you don't know whether it's coming hard or soft, and Gary charges, gets it on a good hop, forces Dave Parker at second. Gary's 0 for 2 tonight, one strike. They're playing two in Houston, the Giants and the Astros. First game in the seventh inning, Giants 9, Astros 1. Very apt to be a managerial change down there in Houston. Two strikes on Templeton. Probably in San Francisco as well. Yeah. <laughs> Might also be a general manager change down in Houston also. And in San Francisco as well. <laughs> yeah. One nothing. Reds lead this game. Won't be long. We'll be getting those announcements of new managers, new general managers, and some of baseball's franchises. I believe that's true. Shortly. Sasky grabs Templeton's fly and they're two away. And of course, there are only a few good men out there for those jobs. I will probably agree to that. I think that's one of the problems that both of those teams have had. Maybe they didn't have the right guys in the right situations. But you never can tell. No, Some, can. Sometimes it's the player's fault. Yeah, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can't do it without the horses, can No. You? Jerry Royster, he's 0 for 2, one ball to count. Truthfully, I think the Giants had a good manager in Frank Robinson. Things didn't work out. And here again, I think the Astros had a good manager in Bob Lillis because I learned a lot of my baseball from Bob Lillis when I first came to the big leagues. Two balls, no strikes on Royster. Well, there's talk that Al Rosen will leave Houston and that Lillis will be cashiered. Pete backing up, this is Oster's ball. And Browning has another magnificent inning. Through six innings, Browning working on a two-hit shutout. 
Brandon Camberman celebrating a birthday today. Denny Vance. What a job they've done for us all season long as always. And we're looking forward to next year already. Well, Fan Appreciation Day at Riverfront. One of the Reds' best special days of the year. It's Sunday, September 29th. Reds and Astros at 215. And you might win an 86 Ford Escort from Fuller Ford, a dream vacation on American Airlines, an Admiral refrigerator or freezer, a Sony TV or more. Be here with us at Riverfront. The Reds' annual Fan Appreciation Day celebration, Sunday, September 29th, against the Astros at 2.15. Postcard entries will be accepted. First pitch is a strike to Buddy Bell. He's 0 for 2. St. Louis at New York, last report, no score in the fifth inning. The Mets lead the Cards by a game in the East. One and one. Philadelphia at home leading Montreal two to nothing in the fourth. Chicago at Pittsburgh no score in the fifth. Atlanta at home leading the Dodgers one nothing in the third. The lock was throw in time. Bell is gone. Of being a good utility player, plays third base, first base, and a little outfield. Takes his time, makes a pretty accurate throw. Steve Garvey does that as well as anyone. Big balls out of the dirt. Here's Dave Concepcion. Ball one. Davey has a single, also safe on an error. I did my Howard Cosell impression today and found out some behind the scenes things that are going on in the American League race over there. The New York Yankees had a deal signed and sealed to bring Tom Seaver back to New York today. The last minute it was declined by the Yankees for two young minor league pitchers. Nixed it. Nixed it. I mention that because Tom played here in Cincinnati a few years ago. Two balls, two strikes on Concepcion. I, I, I'd let you mention it just on the basis that he's a great pitcher. Right. And won 300 games. But the fact he wore a red uniform, even better. Bo Diaz on deck. But I kind of wonder why they didn't try to do that before the September 1st deadline, because he wouldn't be able to play in the playoffs or World Series if they got in there anyway. Sure, that strikes you immediately when you hear that potential deal. Right. How about Don Sutton finally going to the Angels and he's not eligible for postseason play. I know those are a little strange to me. That's a little strange in the fact that he wanted to go there last year and the A's wouldn't let him. <laughs> Royster gets Concepcion two up and two away. I'm sure that salary has something to do with that. Well, it's a, the funny thing about the Sutton deal, he said he didn't want to play for the A's and they forced him to play. Now they trade him just before you know the season's over. That's kind of unusual. You're right, but I probably they didn't want to pick up his salary for next year. But the Yankees, I know why they wanted Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver is New York to New York people, and he got his 300th win there not too long ago. So kind of interesting things going on behind the scenes when teams are actually trying to win divisional titles. Bo Diaz, one ball, one strike. The Reds catcher, old for two tonight. And it kind of follows in the mold of Gene Autry and Steinbrenner's teams always doing that. Vic Reynolds giving chase. He won't get this one. And Diaz will have a double. I've watched Mick Reynolds for two days now, and he does not get a good jump on the ball. As you see here, he's not really going after the ball the way you see on Eddie Milner or Gary Reedus or Gary Maddox go after it. He just does not get as good a jump on the ball as some of the other center fielders in this league, as noted last night when he hit the pop-up that Dave Parker hit fell in for a double. Reds are going to see Oster walk by Shaw. Ron with an eight-game streak and 0 for 2 tonight. That'll put runners at first and second with two outs and Browning coming up. What else do you hear from over the inferior circuit? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was looking at some of the quotes that George Brett made about the fact that the Yankees had beat, I mean, the uh, California Angels had beaten the Rawls the day before. And they came back and won last night. He said, no contest. He figures the Rawls are going to run away with it. Sure, the Angels don't feel that way, but 
I'd have to give Gene Mock a pat on the back for keeping the Angels in the race this long anyway. Browning walloped to double his last at bat. He's one for two. Two on, two outs. Ball one. People that I've talked to in the last week or so in the American League. There's Walter warming up in the bullpen again, the young left-hander. Galen Sisko will come out, the San Diego pitching coach. The people have told me that almost to a man, they think Kansas City is going to end up first in the West. And a lot of them have said from watching both Toronto and the Yankees, they have the sense that Billy Martin is going to be able to whip his club across the finish line first. I would have to agree with the Kansas City team because they have outstanding pitching. In fact, the guy Charlie Liebrandt, who pitched for the Reds briefly, won a ball game last night, his third shutout of the season, and they've got Saber, Hagen, Guba, Gubuska, Gubaza. Gubaza, Mark Gubaza. Yeah, and Don Jackson. They've got some very fine pitchers there, so I think they will win as well. And they got some good hitting, and Hal McRae, who was also a former Red, has come back and done a great job as a designated hitter. Ball won the count on Browning. Chow has it. That retires the side. The Reds no runs a hit. They leave two. Six innings have been played. Pete Rose has successfully achieved the monumental moment. It's 1-0 Cincinnati. The fans jubilant at Riverfront Stadium tonight. Reds with a lead 1-0. Pete Rose picked up hit number 4,192 in the first inning against Eric Shaw. Oh, what a moment it was. We'll, of course, see it again. We'll have all the post-game festivities for you. I was coming up, so stay with us. I bet you may see that 4,192 times before his career is over. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be replayed a few times. Tony Gwynn takes a ball from Tom Browning. Gwynn has rolled out and lined out. Garvey and Martinez will follow 2-0. Two balls, a strike. The Padres coming into this game losing three of four, eight of their last 11. There's a base hit. Boy, he has reached up and socked it. Third hit for San Diego. The more I see of Tony Gwynn, the more I realize that he's actually a real good high ball hitter. Most left-handed hitters are not good high ball hitters, but he is. He seems to take the high ball and go the other way with it. now will face Steve Garvey. Not to be a name dropper, but I will anyway. Steve has a celebrity tennis tournament out in the L.A. area. The Michelob Light Steve Garvey celebrity tennis tournament coming up on November 2nd. Parker is going to grab this one. And Garvey is up. And I am uh, fortunate enough to be handling the announcing of that television show of that event with Steve Garvey. Looking forward to that for the Michelob Light folks in November. That'll probably be seen in maybe Blythe, California. Well, not to not drop any names, but Johnny Bench is coming to play in the fourth annual Joe Morgan Celebrity Invitational October 25th in, at Blackhawk Country Club in Oakland, California. Here's Martinez, but I'm not interested in that because you haven't got it on TV and you don't have me announcing it. And Garvey's playing in my golf tournament. Johnny Bench, Mike Schmidt. One ball, one strike on Martinez. Gwen is at first with one out, seventh inning, one nothing Reds, and in the bullpen, John Franco. You let me know when you get that on TV and I'll be there. <laughs> it's on TV in Oakland. <laughs> Two and one. Working on a three-hit shutout, seventh inning. He has struck out Martinez twice tonight. When goes, Diaz is throw nine times. That was a nice play by Ronnie Oster, the second baseman. He made a nice catch and swipe tag at Tony Gwynn. Throw is down low. Bo Diaz gets rid of the ball quickly. Nice play, but he did not get him. He hits him on the knee, actually, and his foot is in there. Well, steal of the year for Gwen, and he is the potential tying run for San Diego. 
So as you'd say, Joe, that's an important steal. That's very important. That's the type that means something. Three and two. Anytime you can steal a base and get yourself in a scoring position in a close ball game, those are the base stealers that I admire. Milner trying to catch up with it. Oh, what a play. And Gwen, who had to play it halfway, goes back to second. And Milner obviously dazed and I think worried about his leg. That is a great play. Eddie Milner. Oh, let's hope he's not seriously hurt. Larry Starr, the trainer, is racing out. Oh, what a catch. seems to be grabbing his right knee has probably bumped the wall after he made the catch. See how Milner goes after the ball, doesn't take his eye off the ball, running full speed, reaches up, makes a great catch. Now his right knee hits the wall. Unlike Kevin McReynolds last inning, he's running full speed after the ball all the way. He wants to make the catch, and he does. And he says he'll be all right. That's good news. Well, that saves a run in a one-nothing ball game. Reds and the crowd chanting Eddie, Eddie. When at second, two down. Kevin McReynolds, the hitter. play trailing the Western Division leading Dodgers by nine and a half games and the Dodgers lead in Atlanta 11 1 in the fourth inning. Eddie's got to go get another one and the key gets there first and he does it beautifully after six and a half one nothing red heels of a marvelous catch will lead off the inning here's the catch. Eddie is a hitter tonight, 0 for 3. Foul ball. Of course, that catch saved a run with the Reds leading 1 0. Watching him make that play reminds me of a statement they made about Willie Mays once. They said two thirds of the earth is covered by water, the other one third by Willie Mays. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Eddie Milner, one of these days, will be thought of in those terms because he is a fine outfielder. One ball, one strike. If you joined us late, the Reds' run came in the third. It was scored by Pete Rose. One and two. Pete in the first inning with the bases empty and a two-ball, one-strike count, singled to left center off Eric Shaw for hit 4,192. Gary Templeton to Garvey. That's one out, and it'll bring up Pete. Reminder now, stay with us after the game for a special show. The greatest hit of all time, a celebration of Pete Rose becoming baseball's all-time hit leader. We'll have it for you here. We'll have all the festivities. Be sure to stay with us. Historic single in the first has walked and scored and flied to the left. One and two. Still a ball, two strikes. I know one of Pete's 
biggest fans was out here cheering for him tonight. Jeff Ruby, the proprietor at the precincts. And we enjoyed the hospitality there last night. Had a fine dinner at the precinct. Prepared by Chef John. That's right. Down the line. Bear ball. Pete Rose has another hit. Number 4,193. And it is a triple. This is truly Pete Rose's night. And he continues it with this triple down the left field line. Still runs pretty good. Now Dave Parker's not too happy. They're going to walk him again. Parker with this walk will have walked three times twice intentionally and he has a hit one out there'll be runners at first and third action begins in the San Diego bullpen Eric Shaw in trouble and veteran Roy Lee Jackson working in the pen behind him Nicky Sasky in a similar situation in the third inning hit into a force out to drive feet in from third with the game's only talent. Here's a fly ball that'll get him in. Rose will tag. McReynolds the catch. That's the second out and Pete will make it two to nothing. He scored both runs. And Nicky Sasky has the game's two RBIs and he has 50 on the year. wife. She doesn't look too happy. No, it's not exactly Eric's night. Eric Shaw's wife sitting with Lamar Hoyt's wife. Lamar got out unscathed last night, but not Eric Shaw. He's the man who allowed Pete Rose's record-breaking hit. One strike the count, Bell the hitter. Parker at first with two outs. Two to nothing, Cincinnati in the seventh inning. He's quite ready yet. 
but I believe he's going to have to come in and finish his warm up on the mound. He's going to have to get ready in about <laughs> five seconds. Yeah, because I think he's going to take him out. He's about ready to call time again here, I would think. Maybe Roy Lee doesn't want to come in in this situation. What do you think? <laughs> so he's he's, he's his time. looking down to her and he's not getting the word that Jackson's ready. <laughs> Jackson says, I don't want to come in right now. <laughs> Look at this. He's still looking. When are you going to be ready? I want you. <laughs> I think if he lets him start to this hitter, he's going to let him finish. There's some hitters don't want to hit with the winning run on base. Maybe some pitchers don't want to pitch with the winning run on base or go or in the tough situations. Two and all. Down the line and Gwen there to grab it and Shaw is able to survive. Reds get a run. Rose scores it on two hits. Beat has scored both runs tonight. Reds lead two to nothing. Signing autographs on a night that certainly is most memorable for her. Reds lead 2-0. Pete Rose has two hits, two of the seven. And Tom Browning working on a three-hit shutout going to the eighth inning. Bruce Bochy, Kurt Babakwa, and then a pinch hitter for San Diego. One strike on Bochy. His single came in the fifth inning. Max Venable has taken over in left field, replacing Nick Isaski. Isaski in this contest driving in both Reds runs. Two strikes. And Parker in right field. Out number one. Parker ran to third in the bottom of the seventh inning. He had some fun here, Joe. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you think he's going to back him on home play. The old story, they can't tell if I'm coming or going. <laughs> Kurt Bavacqua, one-time Major League Baseball bubblegum blowing champion, takes a ball. Ken, since this may be our last telecast this season, I want to take this time and say to a good friend of mine, Joe Geiger, who's head of AIM from the Handicap in Dayton, Ohio, to have a speedy recovery. She's been recuperating the last couple of months from illness, but she's doing well now. There's a base hit for Bavacqua with one out here in the eighth inning. She's a very lovely lady that works very hard with handicapped kids there in Dayton, Ohio, and I think it's great. Nancy Lopez, Joe Morgan are national ambassadors along with Billie Jean King for the group, and I think it's great that she's able to get back to the office and work with the kids. So good luck to you, Joe, and I'll see you next year. Reds lead two to nothing. And a pinch hitter here, Jerry Davis, Pinch hitting for Eric Shaw, who goes seven innings, allows two runs, seven hits, walks five, strikes out one. One strike on Davis. tonight for Browning. He has not had one since the fifth inning. Still 0-2. It has been quite a night. September the 11th, 1985 at Riverfront Stadium. The greatest hit of all time occurring in the first inning. And in fact, it's really been a marvelous season and will continue to be for the Cincinnati Reds. What a year it's been. Could be two. Over to Oster. On to Rose. That double play. The game goes to the bottom of the eighth. Rose has two hits. The Reds lead two to nothing. Browning has been marvelous.
Carlos on the mound. Now a new San Diego pitcher, veteran Roy Lee Jackson, with experience with the New York Mets and Toronto Blue Jays. So Jackson picks up for Shaw and will work against the Reds in the eighth. San Diego in the ninth will have the top of the order Templeton, Royster, and Gwynn. Roy Lee Jackson. Two saves and a 3-3-1 ERA appearing for the 17th time. Bo Diaz, a double for three. Then Ron Oster. Ball one. Some of the folks from this standing room only crowd have gone home. But most are still here to see the postgame festivities. One and one. And I'm sure that those that have gone home will be with us, if they're not with us already, watching the excitement after the game here on television. Two balls, a strike. support for our Reds telecasts here in 1985. Diaz walks leading off the eighth inning. And of course the telecast would not be possible without the support of wonderful sponsors. Gary Reedus is going to pinch run at first base. Our network sponsors, Anheuser-Busch, Bud, Bush Beer, Toyota, Long John Silver, Seafood Shops. And on the local level, all the sponsors in the various markets who make it possible for you to watch the Reds in Major League Baseball and important games like this one. Ball one to Oster, worried about Reedus, and well, they should. That was a weak pitch out. Yeah, that was. 43 steals this year for Gary Reedus. Anytime you're going to have a pitch out, the pitcher's supposed to throw the ball just as hard as he does on his normal delivery. He just lobbed the ball to the plate. Well, Roy Lee Jackson was supposed to come in and pitch to Concepcion to end last inning, but didn't want to really <laughs> make his way. Reedus goes. The pitch a ball. Bochy's throw. Not in time. Now they get him. He's out. And Fred Brocklander looks him right in the eye to tell him. Templeton did another nice job staying with Reedus to get out number one. Gary gets an excellent jump here. And it's actually a good throw. I'm not sure his hand is off the bag. What did he do? Hit him on the helmet with a glove? Shoulder? Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure his hand was off the back. I thought he might have gotten him as he went by originally on the slide here. Let's see. That's where I thought he was out. Got him on the shoulder with his hand off the bag, according to Fred Brocklander. Two and one on Oster. Let's see this tag again. Let's see here. He calls him safe there. I, I can't see how he can call him out. <laughs> Looks like his hand's on the bag when he tags him. Three and one now on Ron Oster. I would agree, Joe, that it looked like Reedus's hand was off for a moment, but back on when the second tag attempt was made. Exactly. His hand obviously came off the bag when it was back on before he tagged him. We must also say that Fred Rocklander was pretty close to it. He was right on top of the play. All right, let's see. Now he says safe there. Now his hand comes off. Now it's back on. <laughs> I don't know. 
there's a base hit. Ron Oster has a nine game hitting streak. That's eight hits for the Reds tonight. Tander in the bullpen as Dick Williams comes out, and it is Gene Walter, the rookie who was up earlier. Browning, the pitcher, is due. I think, I think something is wrong with Roy Lee Jackson by the way that Dick Williams is coming out. Something's bothering him. He seems to be in a little discomfort there. Yeah. Maybe that's why it was taking him so long to warm up in the bullpen. Something is obviously bothering him. Eighth inning, Reds lead two to nothing back at Riverfront in just a moment. And Wilson with Joe Morgan at Riverfront Stadium, where tonight the Reds lead the Padres two to nothing. Fans make your plans now to be at Riverfront for a big Reds weekend. Coming up this weekend, the 13th through the 15th, it's the Reds and the Dodgers. Friday's matchup is a 6.05 doubleheader. Saturday's game is slated for 7.05. And this Sunday, the 15th, is Team Picture Day, sponsored by York Optometrists, when everybody receives a free color picture of the Reds. Those Reds' weekend dates again, Friday the 13th through Sunday the 15th, the Dodgers in town. The new pitcher is 24-year-old Gene Walter, who had never been in the big leagues before the other day. He is a Chicago native. And there you see the statistical story. He's coming into his 10th game with San Diego. One strike on Browning. a ball one and one we mentioned last night that the Phil Donahue show will be taped at Riverfront Coliseum here in Cincinnati tomorrow morning and we are happy to report that all tickets have been dispersed for that show and it should be a, an exciting show with Pete Rhodes one and two on Browning and many of these same stations will air the Phil Donahue show with Pete Rose on Friday. But if you are interested in tickets for the Donahue show tomorrow here in Cincinnati and you don't have them at this time, they have all been dispersed. One out, Oster at first, eighth. Of and Browning is down on strikes, trying to bunt with two strikes. He bunts foul. Defensive play that saved a run. Ball one. One and one. strikes out the two Reds he faces. The game goes to the top of the ninth. Templeton, Royster, and Gwynn. Reds lead two to nothing. Tom Browning, looking for his fifth shutout of the year, faces Gary Templeton and buries a strike to start the ninth. 
due to all the excitement about Pete Rose, I think people are not really realizing how great a ball game that Tom Browning is pitching tonight. He's been in command from the first pitch of the ball game. He's looking for 16th victory of the year and seventh complete game of the year. And he is ahead of Templeton two strikes after Templeton Jerry Royster and Tony Gwynn. One and two. Pete Rose did it in the first inning tonight with one out. On a two one pitch he singled off Eric Shaw to left center. Templeton thrown out by Oster one out in the ninth. And be sure to stay with us after our game telecast for our special show covering all the postgame festivities on the field. The greatest hit of all time. It's coming up on these stations along the Reds television network. Ball one on Jerry Royster. How long do you think it'll take us to get downstairs, Joe? <laughs> Two days. Two days. <laughs> They've got about 90,000 uh, riders up here, and it only has one elevator to get us all down. Two balls, one strike. One out, top of the ninth. Browning, Rose, and the Reds leading two to nothing. In fact, I think I'll leave now and get down there. Two and two. Two, a big number. Reds winning two to nothing. Pete Rose, two hits. Three and two. And Nikki Sasky, two RBIs. There's a base hit for Royster, his first of the night, and the fifth hit for San Diego. Five different hitters with singles. That has been it. The Padres have failed to get more than one man on in any inning tonight. They got Gwen. The man coming up to second base in the seventh inning after a single he stole second and that has been it. And Franco is ready in the pen. And with Glenn coming up that'll be it for Tom Browning. What an outstanding outing for this 25 year old rookie from Casper Wyoming. Two to nothing Reds lead in the ninth back after this time up. Diego Padres here in the ninth with one out bringing the potential tying run to the plate. Tony Gwynn and John Franco comes on in relief. It has been a super year for Franco. We saw John last night. He pitched an inning and two thirds of one hit shutout ball. We saw him here Monday night and he got the victory. Franco with a marvelous record on the year 12 and 2. And in 55 previous outings, an ERA of 1.84. He has been something trying to complete his 30th game of the year. If it's as they say, you learn something from every manager you play for, I think Pete Rose learned this from Sparky Anderson, Captain Hook. Milner charging in. He's got it. What a play. Eddie Milner. Makes a superb play for the second out and his second jam of the night. Pete Rose, who's going to manage like a Hall of Fame <laughs> manager here. With Steve Garvey comes coming up is going to go to Ted Power in the bullpen. Franco goes a third and Power will be in position to pick up a save. As Sparky Anderson used to say you don't ever let a young kid pitch a great ball game and lose or get in real trouble in the ninth inning. And as soon as the guy got the base hit Jerry Roster got the base hit with one out in the ninth. He brought on John Franco to get him out of the jam. The Reds making a pitching change. We are going to take a break. We're in the ninth. The Reds need one more out to wrap things up, and Ted Power comes in. Steve Garvey stands in the way of a Reds victory. 
Royster at first with two outs. Garvey the hitter, power on the mound, trying to notch his 20th save of the year. Reds lead two to nothing. And that could be it if the park will hold it and whose gloves it's going to go into. Not Pete Rose's. Oh, what a fitting ending that would have been. Rose with two hits. Rose has scored both runs, and he could have grabbed it to end it all. One strike on Garvey. He'll be in Hollywood one day writing scripts. Pete Rose, producer, director, writer. One ball, one strike. The one thing Ted Parr wants to do here is stay away from Steve Garvey's power, which is basically up and in the middle of the plate. So he'll try to stay on the outside part of the plate and down. Tom Browning wins his 16th. Ted Power earns save number 20. Ken Wilson along with Joe Morgan back at Riverfront. Quite a night to think about, isn't it? Well, it was Pete Rose's night, and he took advantage of it. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Not only did he score the only two runs, got the hits that we wanted him to get, but he made a great defensive play to end the ball game. That is what Pete Rose is all about. And everybody came tonight to see hit number 4,192 to make him the all-time hit leader they saw it it was the first inning and I guess momentum now beginning to roll a little bit because we're about ready to head down for some ceremonies well I think this will be great I'm just happy to be a part of this this is a magnificent situation for me especially this our last telecast of the year this is the way to go out well we've had some fun this year it's been a great year Steve Fiziak has been with us Joe and I ready to head downstairs for our show coming up the greatest hit of all time be sure to stay tuned for that and let's go now downstairs to Steve Fiziak all right they're calling it the greatest hit of all time and indeed it was tonight hit number four one nine two for Pete Rose and we have his lovely wife Carol Rose here and I know, Carol, when he had it, you had to have tears streaming down your face. I sure did. I was very emotional, not for just, you know, myself and everything. It was just looking at all the fans and seeing Pete himself emotional. It was just really wonderful to see. And I think he was emotional because he kind of got his wish of getting it here in Cincinnati. Well, we've got little Ty Cobb who wants part of the microphone. He's a little like his dad, Pete Rose, who likes the microphone. He sure does. He's been grabbing at him, that's for sure. And what a way to end it. A backhanded stab toss to the pitcher covering. <laughs> I know. He knows how to do it, doesn't he? Yes, indeed he does. Yeah. What a special moment was. Was it a rare occasion? I know you've seen Pete cry tonight at first base, and I understand he was thinking of his father. <laughs> I'm sure he was. I'm sure his father's watching around here somewhere. He's not missing a bit of it. Well, congratulations to you and your great husband. Thank you very much. Carol Rose of the... Cincinnati Reds and her husband Pete Rose with that fabulous hit tonight 4191 and so many times tonight he said that when he was standing on first base after that pitch that he hit to left field for the historic base hit he indeed was going to make history well the nice game was brought to you by Bush beer the beer with a taste as smooth as its name and by exciting cars and trucks for 1985. Toyota invites you to see them at your Toyota dealer. Oh, what a feeling. And by Long John Silver Seafood Shops, now featuring New Ocean Chef Salad. Once again tonight, the Cincinnati Reds behind Pete Rose, two base hits, 4,192 and 4,193, beat San Diego two to nothing.
scoring Pete, Pete, Pete for the champion tonight, Pete Rose, who hit base hit number 4,192 and 4,193 tonight at a sellout crowd at Riverfront Coliseum. It was absolutely fabulous, and here comes the man himself, Pete Rose, along with Joe Morgan. And along with that, the Cincinnati Reds won. The hitting star was Pete Rose himself. He scored both runs. Tom Browning, John Franco, Ted Power close it out as Cincinnati claims a 2-0 victory over the San Diego Padres. And Pete Rose is coming out to center stage right now. The man who has broken the all-time hit record in Major League Baseball, shattering Ty Cobb's all-time record with base hit number 4,192 this evening, right about 8.15. And then As it was a 2-1 pitch and a slider. Down. Right now, let's go join Marty Brenneman and Ken Wilson at home plate. We are in the process of getting our cord straightened up. Do what? We just had one come on bed here. What am I going to do? Where am I going to stick that? <laughs> the headphones are very, very impertinent to what uh, is about to transpire. We have a gentleman waiting to talk to Pete Rose, who is a big fan of the city of Cincinnati, a big fan of the Cincinnati Reds ball club, and one of the biggest fans in this whole wide world of Peter Edward Rose. He is the president of the United States calling from the White House Mr. Ronald Reagan. Pete, we're waiting to make connection with the president from the White House. You've done this before, haven't you? Waited, yes. <laughs> Last time in Philadelphia? We got time. We're not going anywhere. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hello. Pete Rose. Yes, sir. Alias Charlie Hustle. Yes, sir. This is Ronald Reagan. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Well, listen, I just wanted to say congratulations for breaking one of the most enduring records in sports history, Ty Cobb's career hit record of 4,191, and now, unless you've done something, this I've I heard the latest. You've made it 4,193. Well, I've been rooting for you. And come to think of it, I used to also root for the fellow who once held that record. Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to call us. And uh, we really appreciate it. And you missed a good ball game tonight. one of the all-time greats of the game. Well, thank you very much. Keen batting eye uh, also has something to do with it. Well, my friend. Someday, player. your new record may be broken, but believe me, your reputation and legacy is secure, and I think it'll be a long time before someone is standing in the spot that you're standing in now. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Well, I wish you the Reds and the people of Cincinnati all the best. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Indeed, we ought to do this more often. You know, those of us who are in the middle of our careers can share tips on how to stay ahead of those younger folks who keep coming up on us from behind. Well, if you'd have been here tonight, you'd know why we think this is the baseball capital of the world right here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, I can hear that you've got a few friends there around you, and I won't keep you from them any longer, but again, Congratulations, and you've really, you've really given a lift to the whole country. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Good night, and God bless Thank you. you. The President of the United States, Mr. Ronald Reagan, something that has become somewhat commonplace, those chats between Pete and the President the last few years. We'll now get on with uh, the rest of our program, introducing first to make a presentation, Mr. Bud Feely, who we introduced earlier, the sales manager East from the Chevrolet Motor Division, Bud. Thank you. Well, Pete, in recognition of your historic and remarkable achievement, 
And on behalf of your many friends and admirers in Chevrolet, I'm delighted to present to you the keys to this rose red 1985 Chevrolet Corvette. And you know it's all together fitting because Corvette and Pete Rose are two great American institutions. Congratulations, Pete. Thank you very much, Bud. And if it's all right with you, instead of calling it Rose Red, let's call it Cincinnati Reds you Red, it, okay? Bud. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Next, we'd like to introduce a lady that's brought a lot of excitement to this city. And I think the last couple of nights has certainly helped to represent at least a seasonal culmination of all that's happened here in 1985. The owner of the Cincinnati Reds, Mrs. Marge Schott. Marge? through this I don't believe it but it's been a great great moment for all of us right right but in the meantime each cup has your different records on with a date okay this was hand engraved here is the running man here's the name and your name will go on there and there's the thing then we lift this off Pete and on here is an inscription that says congratulations Pete Rose what's that say breaking a record that has stood since 1928 from the Cincinnati Reds Marge Shot president. Now the But the most exciting thing of all is on this ladle it says Wolfson Lick Shotty. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much, Marge. And I think it was hard to read because Shotzi was guarding it. He was sitting on it. But uh, I just like to... Is this the time now, Marty? I mean, uh, talk about the people. Okay. Marge, thank you very much. It's beautiful. And I'm sure my wife uh, enjoy polishing that uh, once a week. That's probably what it's going to take. Thank you, Marge. We certainly want to recognize and, and read you a message that we received tonight about Pete. It goes like this. All of baseball salutes Pete Rose for breaking a record experts said would never be broken. His 4,192 hits is a tribute to his great talent and strength, his indomitable spirit, and his iron will. Not only has he reserved a prominent spot in Cooperstown, he has reserved a special place in the heart of every fan alive today and every baseball fan to come. That's a message to Pete from Baseball Commissioner Peter Uberoff. And now, without further ado, Pete, we would ask you to sit in the middle of the three chairs right here. We would call on Mr. Nuxall and Mr. Morgan. Mr. Nuxall and Mr. Morgan. Ken Wilson. And it is time now to hear from the man himself, 
on the star of the game show. Joe, it's yours. You can hit, you know that? You can flat hit. Pete, congratulations. You've heard all the folks here this afternoon or this evening, and uh, I'm sure it's worldwide. The uh, congratulations to you, partner. Great job. Well, thank you, Joe. And uh, I really, I'm, I'm really not smart enough to come up with the words to, uh, to show my appreciation for the fans. Uh, I was I was awful lonely when I was out there at first base, and uh, I really couldn't tell you what was going through my mind or going through my stomach. Uh, I, I didn't know what to do. I really didn't know what to do, and and uh, they just made me feel so good. I told uh, Perez, I said, when they was trying to get that toilet paper down, I could have jumped up and got it down for him. Uh, but I think another, this is just another night of, of so many nights here that makes it such a wonderful place to play baseball. And that's, you know, probably the biggest reason why I really wanted to come back here last year when I come back from Montreal. And it's the biggest reason why I didn't want to leave to begin with. Joe Morgan's with Joe will verify it too. He, Joe, thank you. First of all, I'd like to say that I was very fortunate to be able to lock her next to Pete Rose eight out of my 20 years that I played in the major leagues. And I tell you, I learned an awful lot just lock her next to this guy about dedication, determination, and how you're supposed to play this game of baseball. I don't think there's ever been a player that has played the game the way he has. All out every day. I've got a question I'd like to ask Pete, and that is, do you think it's been harder to break this record being both a manager and a player, or would it have been easier just playing the game every day? Well, I, I, I don't think it's really been that difficult being a manager, uh, Joe, simply because uh, of the players I have on my ball club. And, and tonight was one of the very few games since I got into single digits as far as wanting to break the record that the fans really helped us. I mean, maybe we hadn't had that many home games, but I think indication of that was when Eddie made a great catch. Eddie, Eddie, he had a great night too. Uh, Tom Browning, the winningest rookie pitcher in the league, did another great job tonight. And of course, my, my two short men down there in the bullpen, Johnny Franco and Ted Power, did their normal thing tonight. So, you know, this could be a tough job, Joe, in, in some situations, but I think because of the players that we have here, uh, they make my job sort of easy because they understand what we want done. We just want them to play hard and be on time, and they seem to really uh, respond to what I asked them to do. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better situation, really. Pete, I think it's very ironic. Your first hit in the major leagues, triple. triple. What was last hit? No, I'm not saying your last hit, but your last hit tonight, a triple. Now that is amazing. Well, I, I was just trying to hit the ball hard, and I happened to hit it in the corner. Uh, can I say hello to my mom sitting right up there? Where's she at? Where's mom at? No, not everybody waving is my mother, Joe. Right there in the and, and once again, Joe, uh, I just, I, I really can't explain my, my feelings at first base. Uh, I wish everybody in baseball could go through what I went through tonight, stand out first base. Tremendous. I, I tell you, you know, I, I watched you, and I think I, Joe will say the same thing. You fought. Now, I want to tell you something. You, an old warrior you are, you fought tooth and nail not to shed a tear, but you aren't the only one in this ballpark with a tear in your eye, believe me. Well, I was all right. I looked up in the air and I... You know, I, I was doing pretty good until I looked up in the air and I saw my father and Ty Cobb up there, and that, they took care of me. I bet your dad won the argument. I sure, he sure did. 
Pete, I'd like to ask a question that's in the minds of probably all the people that are here today and all watching all around the country. Will you play again next year? Well, uh, to be honest with you, Joe, I'm worried about playing tomorrow night. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that has a lot to do with these two great human beings standing right here, Bill Burgess and Mark Schott. Uh, I still enjoy the game. I still think I can help the ball club, and I still love to participate in front of the fans. So uh, based on how I feel tonight, uh, I think I have to say so, yes. You know, Joe was talking about the fact that you fought hard not to share the tear. I've seen you fight hard for the 20 years that I was in the major leagues. I've seen you play with a lot of injuries. I've seen you play when you probably shouldn't have played. I've told you you shouldn't be out there sometimes and you'd go out and fight hard and play anyway. And tonight it shows the reward for doing all those things. And I just say thanks for letting me be your teammate. Well. You know, that's, that's the other thing that we haven't even started to talk about. And that is, of course, the teammates that I've had in the last 23 years. And the Hall of Fame list goes on and on. Morgans, Robinsons, Benches, Perez's, Foster's, Schmitz, Carlton, Seavers, Carter's. I mean, I've had so many great players on the same team that I was on. It was always fun to play the game. And I just think that there's no better way of making a living to come out here and play baseball. And I forgot Nuxall, too. He was a teammate also. <laughs> and when you have teammates like that who really are dedicated as far as playing the game the way it's supposed to be played, it makes it a lot of fun. And I don't know where the 23, 23 years went, uh, but it seems like yesterday when I was in that batter's box at Crosley Field getting that hit off of Bob Friend. And uh, uh, I hope the next 23 go a lot slower than the last 23. That's all I can say. Pete, you think you'll get another 4,193 hits in the next 23 years? Joe, I tell you, I, <laughs> we needed everything we could get tonight, and, you know, I got the utmost respect for the San Diego ball, uh, Padres, and, you know, they're National League champions, and, and we're trying to get them off our back and get a clean lead for second place, and I just like the way my team responded tonight. Uh, I got the utmost respect for that clubhouse full of guys in there, right. and they do everything we ask them to do, and we really appreciate the people coming out here to see us play. We love it. I disagree with the president of our country, but I don't think anyone will ever get 4193 again. Well, Joe, you know me. I'm going to try to add on tomorrow night. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, hopefully I didn't get my last hit tonight, but uh, I know I'm not going to get much sleep tonight, but uh, we're going to come back out here tomorrow and try to win another game. And, and try to entertain the fans here the best possible way we can, and that's with a win. And what I like about the fans in Cincinnati, once again, you're not just coming to see the Reds play, you're coming to see us win, and that's what we want you to do. Come to see us win. Because we can feel it. Pete Rose. Pete. There he is, folks. A new all time hit leader in the history of baseball. Champagne, Joe. Oh, champagne. Go get it, partner. Congratulations. Pete Rose. High star of the game. There you go. Number one. Outstanding. All right, sit on the star of the game now on most of these same stations. Stay tuned for Marty Brenham with scores and comments. Tomorrow, the greatest hit of all time. Pete Rose picked it up tonight, number 4,192. And our post-game coverage here at Riverfront Stadium will continue. We'll be talking with Marge Schott and more special guests coming right up. And finally, the crowd beginning to file away, though many of them really don't want to leave Riverfront Stadium. And for Marge Schott, the Reds owner, there's got to be some relief amongst all this joy. Oh, there's a relief. <laughs> a few more days of this, I don't know. 
I told Pete, I said, I don't know, Pete, how much I can take of this. He thrives on it, though, I'll tell you. Well, he loves it, but it's tough on but, the rest of us. But what a night. Oh, what a night. And last night, what a night building up to this. Um, this history belongs here in Cincinnati, and I'm so glad it didn't happen in Chicago. I'm sorry, Chicago, but that's the way it is. <laughs> and, this belonged to us. And quite a nice ceremony and uh, lovely gifts and uh, a nice follow-up. I think so, and uh, but just the history of it all, thank God, you know, this many people could see it. And I hope the whole country is behind us and they know what history it is for us. And uh, I think everybody's been cheering for this, I really do. In fact, I think the Reds are the most favorite team in the United States of America. Okay? Uh, America's team, the America's Cincinnati team. Reds. That's what we're going to have, an America's team, Cincinnati Reds. That's the way it ought to be. In the first inning, what was going through your mind is first at bat? Well, I was concerned because I wanted to stall the game start until everybody was in their seats. I didn't want anybody to miss it. And typical PD does it right away, right? <laughs> so thank goodness we did wait time. And uh, But it was it was a thrilling thing. I mean, you know, I didn't mind crying because Pete cried. So I figured, okay, I don't know if Shatsu was crying up there or not, but I know Pete and I were crying. And it was a wonderful moment. And people in the stands were crying. That's how touching it was. You know? Marge, I think people across America and really around the world, because this was televised around the world, had to be crying. You couldn't help it. It was just such you a touching help, moment. I mean, and you know, when you see this many people all in accord with one thing, that's what our country and, and the whole world needs. People all rooting for one thing. And now you as the new owner, with really a new start to a, a wonderful franchise, really have some momentum now to build on. I hope so. I mean, we're going to, you know, make the Reds successful, and baseball is going to become, with the help of Uberoth, everybody else is going to become a healthy game again in this country. I really believe that because baseball belongs to America, and it's something we have to cherish and something we have to be so careful to be sure that we have it for the future. And Pete Rose says he wants to play next year again. Well, sure, why not? I mean, Shotzi wants to, too, okay? <laughs> Shotzi and Pete Rose ready Shotzi to go. Shotzi and Pete out there ready to go. But, uh, no, uh, um, if, if, Shot if Pete wants to play and he can play, that's, I love it. Love every minute of it. Hope he plays to 60. Why not? That's I'll still young retirement, right? That's right. We can go out in a wheelchair together, okay? <laughs> Marge, congratulations. You've done a marvelous job. It was a wonderful night for the world to see right here in Cincinnati. Keep up the good work. Okay, thank you, and I appreciate all the fans and the support of everybody in the country. Marge Schott, majority owner of the Cincinnati Reds, on the big, big night here in Cincinnati as Pete gets the greatest hit of all time, and that's Pete's mom, Laverne. And, of course... They always talk about Pete's dad, but you know how instrumental any mom is in any family. The greatest hit of all time continues live from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati after these special messages. Not want to leave as the hour approaches 11 here in Cincinnati. It was at 8.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time tonight that history was made when Pete Rose picked up that memorable hit. I'm Ken Wilson. We're glad you're part of the greatest hit of all time. And certainly for Bill Burgess, the club's general manager, you came on the scene and you have become a key man in the front office. And this has got to be fun for you. This is very, very exciting, Ken. Uh, not only is Pete an outstanding ball player, which he's been for many, many years, but uh, he's just an outstanding gentleman. He's a fine man to work with. And I couldn't ha be happier for someone to uh, get this record and to get all the acclaim that he's getting because it's well deserved and in terms of baseball it's a it's a big night and I, it's kind of hard in baseball being such a great game with so much history to put it all in perspective what it means when they'll write the complete history of this game well yes because I happen to feel that this is one record that may never be broken because of the fact that ball players of today uh, just don't seem to be uh, able to stand the gaff, to stand up to the pressures, the the competition for as many years as Pete has. Endurance, such a key. Now, you work with Pete, he's the manager, you're the GM. That's an important relationship in an organization. Yes, it is, and I, I have to say that I've never, I've worked with a lot of fine managers. I've worked with fellows like Billy Martin, Bob Lemon, uh, Gene Michael, uh, Dick Hauser. I want to say this, Pete Rose is as nice a man as you could ever want to work with. He's so cooperative, uh, he knows his baseball, and we talk all the time. We talk every day, 
And I tell you, it's just a great relationship that we enjoy. We've spent a lot of time talking about Pete tonight, and well, we should. But I know Reds fans in particular have gotten a big lift this year with the improvement of the club, the Diaz's, the Bells have come along, and the youngsters. For instance, tonight, Tom Browning. The future is rosy. Yes, it is. It's very rosy because we have some more youngsters just like Tom Browning down in the farm system. Our fellows like Chief Bender, Larry Doty, Greg Riddock have done a fine job of uh, first finding those ball players and then having them develop uh, those kids to have them ready to come up to this club. It looks like maybe not a dynasty to talk about yet, but certainly a contending team definitely for the future with the fellows like Eric Davis, Cal Daniels, who played at Denver. There are, and Kurt Stillwell, the shortstop. There are some true outstanding players on the way. Yes, uh, I'm happy to say that recently the Baseball America, which is a, an independent newspaper, uh, picked the top 10 players in AAA, and four of those top 10 were ours. In fact, we had one, two, three, and then the fourth player was number eight of the top 10. So I think that's something to be very proud of. Were you uh, surviving well, Bill Burgish, in that first inning when Pete came to bat? I know you were in the crowd. Yes, uh, it was one of the few times that I sat down with Marge Schott in her private box. I usually sit up above, uh, out of the, the way, and try to keep my records and keep up with things. But tonight I sat down here, and to me it was extremely exciting. How much longer does Pete Rose go on? Can anybody determine that? He's just like old man River. He just keeps rolling along. When he says he wants to quit, that's when he's going to quit. Because I happen to feel he's far from through as a player. He can definitely hit. And what a wonderful defensive play he made. This really was Pete Rose's night. Two runs, two hits. Great defensive play. He did it all. Yes, that's right. He did it all tonight. And he's done it all on many other occasions. He's still uh, got a lot of good baseball left in him. Bill? Everybody looking forward to the final weeks of this season. Congratulations on the job you have done and the future looking good here in Cincinnati. Thank you, Ken. It's good to be with you. Bill Burgess, general manager of the Cincinnati Reds. Pete Rose, tonight in the first inning, picked up hit number 4,192, the hit that eclipsed Ty Cobb. So it's now Charlie Hustle, and Ty Cobb is in the background. Base hit, left center field. That was it. The crowd went wild. And Pete, it was quite a moment. We'll return with more of the greatest hit of all time after this. All time and young Pete Rose Jr. joins us now, who is just a sophomore at Oak Hills High School, but a budding superstar and hopes to play in the major leagues. He watched as his father, Pete Rose Sr., drove that base hit into left center field. And Petey, I just wanted to ask you, what was going through your mind as you, as you watched your father to play in that first inning of play? Oh, that was great. That was the best time of my life I ever had. I had chills at least 10, 15 minutes. It was great. As he stepped to the plate, you predicted last night it would be his second or third time at the plate. Remember, did you think it would come the first time up tonight? All the fans, yeah. I thought it was going to happen, but it was, it was great. From the dugout, your angle, you watched the ball come off the bat, and what were you yelling? I was yelling for the ball to get down, but right when it got down, I was the first one out of the dugout. And then, standing over at first base, that was such a touching moment, tears rolling down your father's eyes, and he said he was thinking about his father at that time. What was Pete's son thinking at that time? I was thinking about him all the way, because i never seen him cry before, but I had a little tear in myself. It was just, you know, emotional moment, but it was great. And you raced out there to first base. I was the first one out there. I was sprinting out there. How long can this, this guy go? I hope forever, but maybe two or three years, I hope. He's 44 years old. He still says the most magic moments are the World Series moments. I don't think so. This has got to be the best. I mean, this was just phenomenal. It was, it was, it was just great. Will there be an emotional letdown for him? No, I don't think so. Because he'll come, come back tomorrow. He'll get two hits tomorrow, and he'll be just back in the groove. What happens to young Pete Rose Jr. now? Well, I'll go celebrate with my dad. And then tomorrow you finally head back to school? Yeah, maybe, I hope, probably, <laughs> if I get home in time. But I might spend a night at my dad's house, but I'll, I'll go to school tomorrow. All right, Petey, thanks very much for joining us. Pete Rose Jr., who it was such a special moment for E2 as he watched his father wrap that base hit at the left field for base hit 4,192. 
Now, Ken Wilson's with Joe Morgan at this particular time. Let's go over to those fellas. On the windy field, the crowd yelling, Joe, Joe, they're about ready to have a night for you, I think. Well, Pete's gone. <laughs> I'm the only one left. <laughs> was it fun for you? It was great. I tell you, it's, uh, it's a magnificent feeling to be involved in something like this, especially as an announcer. You know, I, I was involved myself on a couple of occasions when I broke a record or did something special, but it's really fantastic for me, especially my first year in broadcasting, to be involved in something like this. So here we are. Pete Rose has the hit. You've been part of the hoopla. You had fun talking to him, I know, and you're going to visit with him again for a later show. And you know, it's hard to really come up with words when you when you're trying to wrap something like this up. Well, I think Pete said it best. He said, "I just can't think of words to say at this particular time because it's such an exciting moment. No matter how much you think about it, when it finally happens, it's really unique. You know, the build up and all the things that I thought I might say or think when this happens." It all went out the window. When it did happen, it was there, and all of a sudden, my feelings were different. But I'm just happy that I was a part of it because I played with the guy for so many years, and I tell you, he is special. Pete Rose, special in the record book in so many ways, now with 4,192 and 93 hits. And tonight, the Reds win 2 to nothing, in part because of Pete, in part because of Nick Kosaski's two RBIs, and also, in big part, because of Tom Browning, and he's with Steve Fizio. Uh, everybody has been shouting about Pete Rose tonight. We all know he scored the two runs for the ball game, but it was a shot up by way of three pitchers, Tom Browning, John Franco, and Ted Power. We've got Tom Browning with us at this particular time. Tommy, I know how bad you wanted this victory, just watching you in the dugout before the ball game, seated by yourself, and it looked like you were in a little bit of a sweat. Well, I was just a little bit nervous. You know, I knew there was going to be 50,000 people in the stands, but, uh, you know, I really tried to put that in the back of my mind. I just went out there and tried, you know, I want to go out there and do the job I know I'm capable of doing. And, uh, you know, it was nice seeing Pete get that base hit the first time up and uh, kind of get rid of that, you know, get let the fans take care of that and uh, give him his ovation. In. And then it made my job a little bit easier. You know, he just went out there and, uh, you know, played the game. And uh, Pete came up to me and just, you know, kind of said, bear down, let's go get him. And, uh, you know, I was able to do that for eight in the third innings. And Franco and Power came in and did a good job. And, you know, I can't take any away from Eddie Miller. He did a great job for me. Made, you know, made two good plays on me. And, uh, you know, of course, Nick Cassassi driving in both runs. You know, it was, it was a good win. It was, uh, it was a Pete Rose night. And he did everything for us tonight. And, uh, you know, it's just incredible being part of this history. Well, I know it was Pete Rose who took you out of the ball game. And I know how important complete games are to pitchers. What was the conversation in the mound? Well, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what... You know, was going through his mind. I think he went with Franco, and because he was a little bit stronger than I was, and uh, you know, he didn't want me to get into a situation where I had to, you know, the, the winning run on uh, up to the plate. And he went with Franco because he's a little bit stronger than I was. And then Franco got going out, and then he brought Teddy. And you know, they did a great job for, for us again, like they did. And uh, you know, I can't, like I said, I can't take anything away from anybody. Milner did a good job. Asaski, you know, Pete, everybody. You know, it's just incredible to be part of this thing. Five shutouts this year, but you told me before the ball game. Pete was going to get the base hit, but it would be oh, less than the, the record had we lost the ball game. So the, a lot of the pressure rested on number 32 shoulders. Well, you know, once he got the record, I just kind of went out there and bared down and did the best I could, got ahead of the hitters, and uh, you know, tried to do the best I could to get him out. And you know, once he got the record, I think the odds of San Diego winning were slim because you know it's a Pete Rose night and we did what we had to do to win, and uh, it turned out we won the ball game. Some final thoughts from you, Tom Browning just on Pete Rose himself. What have you learned? What have you taken from one of the greatest hitters of all time and now a very fine manager? Tremendous person. I mean, uh, in every aspect of the world. He's a great manager, great player, a great person. You know, all he does is expect 110% from you. And as long as you go out there and do your job, he's not going to really, you know, he's, he's shown all the confidence in the world for, with me. You know, Kitty's done the same thing. And as long as you go out there and give 110%, he's going to back you up. And that's, you know, exactly what I want to go out there and do. Tom Super Performance, five shutouts this year. Congratulations. The Cincinnati Reds with a victory this evening, 2 0 over the San Diego Padres. We'll come back with some final thoughts on the greatest hit of all time after these words. Only a few fans linger now. The rest is history. The ballpark virtually empty. Ken Wilson with Steve Fiziak and Joe Morgan wrapping things up, and Fiz, it was quite a night. It was the greatest sports moment, I think, in my life, and it's something I can't wait to tell my grandchildren all about. And for Joe Morgan, something special. It's been a special year. Well, it's been special for me, my first year in broadcast, and I'd like to thank you and Steve for the help that you guys have given me this year. It's been a pleasure. Hey, we're going to work together 
more, you know. I know that, but it's been a pleasure. <laughs> okay, we had some fun. Thanks to you, we've appreciated being with you in 1985, and thank you.